Okay, so let's do a practice question together. Here's an equation. Y equals 3x minus 5 squared plus 10. There's a nice mathematical sentence. I just don't know whether it's true or false. All depends what one chooses to be x and chooses to be y as values. Anyhow, let's graph all the data that makes this a true sentence about numbers. That is, let's graph that equation. Let's graph that quadratic equation. All right, so here's how my brain works. I'll show you how my brain works in this one. I see it's really just 3 times something squared plus 10. In fact, I see it's basically just the formula y equals x squared that's been modified. It's been messed around with. People have done things to it. What have they done to it? Well, I can see they've made the number 5 behave like 0. When I put in x equals 5, I get 0 squared. So I see that 5 is behaving like 0. So normally, normally I see 0 is the vertex. But now I'm making 5 behave like 0, so now I've got 5 behaving like the verdicts. I must be over there. All right, but there's more going on, because not only have I did that, make 5 behave like 0, I see that I've actually introduced a steepness of 3. So it's a fairly steep symmetrical U-shaped graph. So it'll be a steepness of 3, so it's fairly steep. Except it's now happening at 5. Fairly steep graph happening at 5. Except I see all the data values have been shifted up by 10. A lot going on. So we changed the steepness, we made 5 behave like 0, and we shifted everything up by 10. So, my picture's getting too crammed and silly there. Let's make a nice, good, decent picture. Here's what's going on in this graph. 5 is behaving like 0. I can see 5 is behaving like 0. I see it's a fairly steep U-shaped graph with 5 behaving like 0, except everything's been added up 10 high. So it must be 10 places higher with that steepness going on from there. Beautiful. That is actually good enough. y equals 3x minus 5 squared plus 10. There is a fairly good graph, as rough as that is, it's actually a fairly good graph that shows all the information about that particular equation. The only thing I might be missing, if you want to be fussy, should label my axes x and y, but then I'm happy with that. That's good. That's showing everything that's going on. In fact, you can even say what the vertex is. Somebody won't tell you what the vertex is. What's the vertex? Well, it's the point 5, comma 10. 5, 10. I can see it. I can see it. Beautiful. So that's how you think your way through these things. Just ask, what number is behaving like zero? What sort of steepness do you have? Has anything been shifted up or down? And life is grand. In fact, do this one on your own. But let me add a complication. I made nice positive and negative signs here. Let me switch up the negative and positive signs and see if you can handle it. So back in a moment, I'll clean the board with a practice question for you. Okay, practice question for you. Can you sketch me a fairly decent graph of the equation y equals negative 2 x plus 10 squared minus 7? So how is it? It's really basically just a y equals x squared graph that's been moved and shifted around. So can you figure out what that movement is and then draw me a fairly decent graph of it? Give it a try. Okay, just so you have it, here's my answer to this question. It's a rough graph, but actually it's got all the correct information. Did you notice that negative 10 is behaving like zero? zero. Did you notice that everything's been shifted down by 7? Actually, shifted up by negative 7, which is a shift of down by 7. And actually, it's the steepness of negative 2, so it's a fairly steep graph going into the negatives. Did you get something like that? All right, let's now go back to the opening puzzler. That is, we looked at the graph of y equals x squared, a nice symmetrical U-shaped graph, and we looked at the graph of y equals 2x, a kind of unsymmetrical straight line graph, and I was worried about what it means to add these two graphs together in some sense. Namely, if I took these outputs and these outputs and added them together to make those outputs, I'd get another graph. Now, I don't know if you plotted it, if you made a table of values and plotted it, but here's the shocking thing. This is symmetrical. All right, nice symmetry. This is kind of anti-symmetrical, completely unsymmetrical in that sense. But the surprising thing is, what comes out if you do plot this thing is another perfectly symmetrical U-shaped graph. That is, as something symmetrical and something anti-symmetrical together, lo and behold, the result is another symmetrical graph. Now, I'm going to prove that right now, because actually, it's back to the algebra of quadratics will do that. In fact, it's kind of like, can we turn this level 3 problem back to a level 2 problem? Because I've kind of got a level 3 expression right now that I want to turn into a level 2 expression. 
Let me show you how. Let me show you how. So right now, I've got y equals x squared plus 2x. So let me try the quadrus method on this part of the expression. Let me do the work we're doing in the algebra lectures on this part of the expression. This, let's try to draw a nice symmetrical square. That is, I want an x squared piece, and I want to keep it symmetrical from x times x. Great. I want two, an area of 2x, so I'll keep it symmetrical and make it an area of x and an area of x, which means I want something times x is 1, something times x is x is, means it's 1, something times x is x means that's 1, which means the extra piece I want is a 1. It's missing a 1. Not to panic. What we did before was just made a 1 happen. So let's add 1 to both sides. So it's now y plus 1 equals whoops, x squared plus 2x plus 1. And why do I like that? That's because it's just exactly the square. x squared, x squared, 2x, 2x plus 1, 1. So this is actually the x plus 1, x plus 1 as a square, x plus 1 squared. All right, so that's what I've got so far. That means this equation could have been rewritten this way. But let me subtract 1 from both sides. y is x plus 1 squared take away 1. I love it. Because that tells me, look, this is just the, the y equals x squared graph with x equals negative 1 behaving like 0 and everything shifted down by 1. It's negative 1 is behaving like 0 and everything is shifted down by 1. It actually is the y equals x squared graph again, the nice symmetrical y equals x squared graph, but shifted 1 and 1. In fact, there it is. It's actually this graph right here, the symmetrical x squared graph shifted to the left and shifted downwards. Wow. In fact, we can do this for any quadratic expression. Let me do another example right now and show you what I mean. I'll be right back. I have to clean the board. Okay, so we see that we're onto something here. For example, let's show that the graph of y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10 is really actually the same as the symmetrical u-shaped graph of y equals x squared, except it's just shifted in the plane, you know, horizontally or vertically or both. Okay, so the way we do it is actually through the technique of the algebra we've been doing, the symmetrical quadrus method. So let's look at this equation, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10, and focus on the quadratic piece of that expression. In which case, I will do the quadrus, the symmetrical technique on that quadratic expression. Namely, I will turn it into a symmetrical square. So symmetry is my friend, so I'll do this, the algebraic symmetry on this. There's an x squared piece coming from x times x. Keep it symmetrical. I want negative 6x. Keep it symmetrical. Negative 3x, negative 3x. Something times x is negative 3x, negative 3. Something times x is negative 3x, negative 3. Negative 3 times 3 means the piece I want here is 9. I've got 10. I won't panic because I'll subtract 1 from everything. So y minus 1 is x squared minus 6x plus 9. Well, that's all the whole square. So there's actually the x minus 3 square. So y minus 1 is the x minus 3 as a square. And to get y all by itself, I see this as y is x minus 3 squared plus 1. So yes. It is the y equals x squared equation, but with 3 behaving like 0, and everything shifted up by 1. Exactly the same graph. In fact, I could quickly sketch a graph very quickly. 3 is behaving like 0, 3, everything's up by 1. It must be the y equals x squared graph over there. So beautiful, beautiful. We're getting that symmetrical u-shaped graph again. A practice question for you. Okay, let's try another example. Let's go up a slight notch in difficulty and put a number in front of the x squared term. Let's show that the graph of this expression, y equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 6, actually has to be another symmetrical u-shaped graph. And we'll do it exactly the same y way by using the quadrus method on this quadratic expression here. But let's do it. Um, so I've got that y is 2x squared plus 8x plus 6. Actually, I've got a choice here because I've noticed all these numbers are even. I might also make my life a little bit easier for myself and just divide everything by 2. So I've got half of y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. 
I mean, my other method could have been just use the quadrus method and multiply everything by two, so I get four x squared here, nice perfect square. Either way, it's good. But let me just try dividing by two, because that seems simpler to me right now. It looks like there's gonna be friendly numbers. So let me now do the quadrus method on just that part. So I've got a nice square. Well, I wanna have a nice square. X squared, coming from x and x. Keep it symmetrical, four x, 2x and 2x, which means that's a 2 and that's a 2, which means the missing number I want is 2 times 2 is 4. So I've got a 3. So let's add 1, add 1. So 1 half of y plus 1 is going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4. It's this as a square, x plus 2 as a square. Now let's just keep rewriting this. Uh, let's subtract 1 from both sides. So half of y is x plus 2 as a square minus 1. And now let's double everything again y is 2, x plus 2 as a square minus 2. So actually, I can now rewrite this expression to actually see, yes it is, it's basically a y equals x squared graph that's been moved around. In fact, I can see that negative 2 is behaving like 0, so it's behaving at like it's now happening at negative 2. I see that everything is shifted down by 2, and I see it has a steepness of 2. So it's going to be a fairly steep uh, graph down here, negative two behaving like zero, negative two down, like that. But as an, again, it's basically just an x squared graph that's been shifted around and actually is a steep one. But it is a symmetrical U-shaped graph. In fact, that's my point. You know, I can make the difficulty go up and up and up, but the point is you can always make this method work. You can always apply the quadrus method to any expression here to show it actually just have to be a square with maybe some steepness and it's got a new zero and maybe shift it up and down, but it's going to be one of those y equals x squared graphs just modified. So the graph is guaranteed to be symmetrical. So that's the big point of today's lecture. So let me actually write it up officially. In fact, I'll even do it in red because it's important. So let me clean the board and write up the official result right now. Okay, here is the big point of today. In fact, this entire lecture was all leading up to this one big point that's suddenly going to make everything about graphing quadratics ridiculously easy. So today's lecture is all a lead up to this moment for lecture six, where graphing is going to become a piece of cake. So here's the big point. It's this. Every quadratic equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, can be rewritten in the form to show that its graph really is a symmetrical, a symmetrical U-shaped graph. Because once we know for sure everything is going to be a symmetrical U-shaped graph, symmetry is our friend, and it's going to make graphing suddenly ridiculously easy. The power of symmetry. The power of thinking like a mathematician. Now, I love this result because it actually is mind-blowing. It's the opening puzzler. Because we've got this piece, y equals ax squared. We know it's a little U-shaped graph, symmetrical about the vertical axis. And then we've got this part here, which is a line y equals bx plus c, probably from the early grades, you know the equation that's going to be a line. Yet somehow bringing a u-shaped graph and a line together gives you another symmetrical u-shaped graph. This is actually mind-blowing, but I love it. I love it. We've got symmetry and that's the point of today. All we have to do is use the quadrus method on this expression and you can prove it really is going to be a basic u-shaped graph, u-shaped graph that's been moved around somewhere on the plane. Symmetry is our friend. Next lecture, we're going to redo all the graphing and realize how easy it is now that we know for sure everything is symmetrical. Wow, I cannot wait for next lecture. So I'll see you in lecture six. I can't do it with six fingers. All right, see you then.